Uh, good afternoon, student of the course uh, TQ4021. And, uh, you know, we are following our ass assignment that we have with respect to jacket, uh, process control on jacket, system that have jacket like shown on these piano IDs, and where we have a vessel with some flow in, flow out. So, whatever mass flow in will also flow out. Uh, the level of the tank is constant and uh, the flow of whatever we have in the jacket is flow following here as shown on this PNID and coming out this way. So basically on this type of system uh, the variable that we like to adjust is the flow through the jacket and that kind of uh, complete our PNID in where the closed loop for temperature control inside the vessel will be done by controlling or manipulating uh, the valve as related to the jacket flow. So, and uh, before we start here, some of the data that we have. In this particular case, on this side, I mean, I have a left side and right side here. This left side is about when you are cooling, uh, you have the jacket is at minus five, the, whatever is coming through this uh, is at minus five. Now, the inside, then you are removing the heat from whatever is inside here. Actually, there's a reaction going on here with a delta H of reaction of 10 kilowatts. That's the amount of heat that's being produced internally here, but also the T1 is about 60, so there's a kind of a hot fluid getting in, and with that fluid getting in, plus the whatever heat is coming from this part as well. So everything here is getting kind of a hot. Now, the idea of the jacket is to cool that down uh, eventually. So that's the idea. I mean, we are not doing process control. We are just doing steady state. And for that steady state, remember that this equation here, uh, the amount when we do the energy balance, both for the vessel and, uh, and the jacket. So like for the vessel, the energy balance will be whatever energy is coming through here or energy flow I would I should say that's M1 CP T1 minus whatever is coming out that's M2 CP2 T2 plus whatever heat is getting in through here there's a heat of reaction or something so that's QRX here now why minus here careful here before let's before I put it down minus there let's study this part here we are actually removing heat from this uh, the heat from the content of the vessel we are removing heat now we want to keep that uh, I will call it Q jacket typically this part here is called Q jacket we want to keep that term positive that means that T2 is higher than TJ2 TJ2 is the exit uh, jacket temperature and we are saying that most of this jacket is about TJ2, so the temperature, the exit temperature of the jacket, which is uh, it's a presumption. It's not a, I mean, an assumption. I would say this would be, can be, I would say not that good or not that great, but it gives us a start to get this problem uh, kind of a fix in such a way that can be trackable trackable with only these two differential equation now with that said uh remember we want to keep uh, qj positive that means t2 always will be higher than tj2 meaning that that term will be positive now that's the amount of heat that is being removed by the jacket and uh so in other words that heat is coming from the in the, from the content of the vessel out that's the negative here that's where there's a negative there now if we do the same on the jacket side the energy balance is whatever energy is energy flow coming through here mgc pj it's a different i mean it's a different uh uh what we call it heat capacity because the jacket might be a different solution a different fluid so it could be a mixture of glycol and water and so forth and this is something else so that's why uh, as you can see here the cp the heat capacity for the counter of the vessel is 4.80, more like an air cube space, and the jacket is about 2.3. This is more like an oil, something that uh, is used for uh, for the jacket side. Now, when we do the energy balance, whatever energy flow in, energy flow out, remember that MJ1 or MJ2 is, pretty, is at the same value because, I mean, whatever comes through here will come out through this part here. 
so plus now that heat Rita is being removed from the content of the vessel is accepted by the jacket so that's why it's a positive here now both things are divided by uh, for example on this equation for the energy balance divided by the total mass here times the CP there all right just and that, that those two will not change basically uh, within the range of temperature that we are studying the same happened on the jacket remember that these two equations will be analyzed at the steady state that means that this differential part will be gone and I don't really need the MT or the MJ for this because we are not doing dynamic on this particular problem we are not doing process control so we don't need those now we will do them later oh definitely now um, so we are cooling on this side how about the right side on the right side is different check the if check the order I had TJ2 minus T2 remember that I always call this QJ as shown here and I want that to be a positive term now that amount of heat TJ2 minus T2 it means that the heat is getting in to the content of the vessel so we are heating the content of the vessel and that's why we have that positive there so is the same as this one but there's a, a you know a difference in terms of how you analyze the the whole thing try to keep the qj positive and you will be always good because the only thing that you have to consider is then is this sign here all right so on the jacket side if it's positive in this size then that heat is coming out from the jacket into the vessel that's why you have a negative here again uh mt and mj are parameters you know like mass total mass here and total mass on the jacket side uh, again if we are looking into the steady state of any of these equation on the right on the left side on the right side and uh, when we take this to zero that would be basically we don't need it at this point not for this uh, so I did this one already there's a video about you know how to work on this one I want to do is uh, this second video will be addressing this part here when we are cooling so let's see let's copy this I'm gonna copy this put into Excel and uh, let's work this equation in, within Excel and let's see what happened I'm right here in Excel now as you can see I had the differential equation again I want to thank a student that sent this information to me and uh, and the idea is always we start with parameters And then we follow with values as always and units units are very important keep you straight now for parameters let me see something here parameters. We go. now um, I'm gonna take the way they, they are shown here so like uh, the, the m dot call that m dot actually let me gonna leave it like that m dot m dot that's m dot one you know m dot one mean the flow into the jacket as shown here it's called uh, the values about if I can see that number I believe that is 0.05 it's kind of hard to see I'm not sure if it's 0.03 as per the note here but I think it's 0.05 I'm gonna put 0.05 uh, and let's see what that would be so 0 0.05 0 0.05 and uh, that's kilograms per second and uh, the temperature in T1 is about let me get this right it's about 60 degrees kind of hot and uh, the heat capacity for the tank I'm gonna go write this like CPT or actually C CPT is about 4.18 I'm gonna write the unit later on just be sure that the unit are kilo J I mean kilojoules kilograms degree C or degree Kelvin and uh and that's cpt and anything else like qrx qrx that's the heat of reaction it's about 10 kilowatts and ua 
it's about 10 as well kilowatt degree C and uh, anything else on on the vessel that I need to you know on the content of the vessel that I want to put those first and then now I'm going to put the stuff for the jacket part now on the jacket I have a uh, let's see the jacket we start with a flow I have a uh, here a couple of variables that I want to entertain like for example maximum flow through the jacket is about 0 0.8 so I want to write here uh, M J maximum MJ maximum is about 0 0.8 and uh, now as you can see I have uh, I'm not adjusting, typically I adjust this through a, G, a COJ, so it's like a, let's write here, COJ, and uh, and the idea is this one, um, for example, it need to give me about 0.3, so a number here have to be provided just so that I can hit an actual flow, an MJ flow of 0 0.3, so that means that uh, actually um, before I put that 0 0.3 let's put a number here like 37 if I remember this 37.5 or something let's see so that means that uh, this maximum flow time the adjustment of the valve remember that the valve is adjusted from 0 to 100 percent that divided by 100 this where the 0.3 come out so that means that this is in percent I adjust the percentage of the valve how, how you know how uh, what was, will be the aperture of the valve to allow the flow so it's gonna be pretty much close 37.5 from the maximum of 100 that provide us about a 0 0.3 kilograms per second actual flow through the jacket at what temperature T I, um, the person right uh, wrote here TJ2 equal minus 5 actually is T should be TJ1 that's the inlet temperature here TJ1 so TJ1 TJ1 should be minus 5 please correct that it's TJ1 no TJ2 TJ1 you don't know this temperature nor this one so pretty much those are the uh, the variables that we are looking for to resolve on this steady state um, let's see anything else yeah about the CP for the jacket and that case it's an oil 2.3 kilograms oh sorry kilojoules kilograms C that will do anything else that I might be missing look looking good actually let's fix this so it looks a lot better and um, this a little bit and that will do I think uh, uh, let's fix this better I like to and um, there we go I think that I got all the parameters that I need for the steady state remember that I might uh, well not in this case when you are doing dynamic or you are doing uh, process control, definitely you need the mass. Uh, you uh, let me close this so you can see what I'm talking about. You will need uh, the empty, the mass of the vessel here inside, and the mass of the around the jacket. So you need those two. But we are doing steady state, so that's why I don't. I'm not uh, worried about it because they are not here either. So what we're going to do is now uh, prepare solver to get uh, this done. For solver, basically, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, um, this are going to be the temperatures. What are the temperatures? That would be T2 and TJ2. Those are the exit temperature here and here. And what are uh, here are kind of estimated values. I don't know what they are. I can put any number there, 50, 50. And just one thing, uh, this energy balance always I presume or assume that uh, it's only it's only it's only gonna be one phase. I'm only dealing with one phase here, liquid phase. Uh, that means that uh, 
If the temperature is higher than 100 degrees here, it means that this vessel is under pressure to keep a single phase. All right, that will do. Now, what about the equation? I write, write the equation here. And here's how you do this in solver. The nice thing about solver is that we will do this like uh, it's shown here. Pretty much that's the way it is. I'm gonna write it like that. So it's gonna be M1, that's gonna be this flow time, CP, CP, and that CP is for the jacket, times T1, minus the same flow, that's this guy, times CP, times CP times T2. T2 is this value. You know, I'm assuming that that's the correct value. I don't know what they are, but we're gonna give that to solve it as a star. Minus, or in this case, plus QRX. That's a, uh, a reaction, exothermic reaction with this amount of energy being released. Um, minus now UA. We look for UA times T2 and uh, that's this guy here minus TJ2 which is this one here we close parenthesis and uh, I don't think that we need anything else now the nice thing is I don't have to put dollar anywhere because I'm not going to be dragging this that's going to stay the way it is so we set enter there and we write the next equation that will be MJ now whatever flow I'm having right now because this calculation is basically to calculate what will be uh, the exit temperature T2 and TJ2 at this flow when the valve is adjusted at 36, 37.5. So now we're going to write the equation that's MJ equal MJ, we look for MJ, this one times CPJ, that's uh, this guy here, times TJ1, that's this guy here minus MJ again that's this guy here times CP remember don't confuse the uh, heat capacity of the of the jacket side versus the internal content of the vessel they could be the same but in this case they are different so you want to be careful with that uh, times T2 TJ2 sorry TJ2 that's it we are here now plus UA times T2 minus TJ2 which is this one close the parenthesis there and we are basically about a baby step to get this done the next things that we want to do is go now to data solver any solver let's put this here close so let's identify what we want we want that this first equation uh, the value of zero now since uh, let's see let's do this again c dollar 14 yeah it's right there by changing what by changing these two guys now get this on constraint out just because i well you might have negative value, so that's why you want to keep that uh, out. Now, anything else that you want to do here? I'm using a non-linear. Uh, it could be linear as well, so I'm not sure. Now, well, let's leave a simple LX because these are very, very easy and straightforward equation uh, to deal with. Now, how about uh, here? I need to add the second equation, which is this one. And that should be equal zero. Let's say okay. So I have my first equation is set to zero, as shown here, value of zero. My second equation is here, which is also set to zero. And again, by changing these two guys, those two guys will be changed accordingly for solver using the simple X linear system and uh, uncheck the constraint variable and I can check on the options and it says that all method has a very small uh, constraint precision I would say that's okay for what we're doing right now and uh, there we go let me be sure that I'm in the right place C$14 good 
and 37.95 so let me solve so this is the final solution is 22.6 and 20 on the jacket side now those are MJ 0.3 now what will happen I can what I will do here is the following like for example let's say I, I got those values when COJ was 37.5 so I can copy this and put it here and put them uh, like numbers so I don't they don't they would not change because they are for COJ equal 37.5 now the part that is always important is to find out what will happen if the jacket is fully closed what would be the highest temperature because you are not cooling anymore so this is gonna get hot so that requires me to get instead of using this 37.5 put zero there if I put zero everything will change and now I need to go and resolve this back again so we go back to solver and in solver we solve and uh, there's nothing to change and we say okay so that's the maximum temperature I'm gonna get see jacket uh, jacket and vessel are both at the same temperature both above 100 degrees meaning that everything is under pressure just to stay in one phase now we're gonna copy this and we're gonna set this is for COJ equals zero percentage so there's no flow when there's no flow the maximum temperature can be picked from here copy and we're gonna put that in and that's it at no flow you have maximum temperature at the 37.5 flow you have a uh, this temperature as shown here now the next thing is what's going to happen with COJ is a hundred percent now you are maximum flow maximum cooling so back again resolve this equation and this is what you need to do go back again to solver and say solve and we say okay so here we are again this is going to be now at maximum flow this is going to be the lowest temperature you can get you cannot get any any lower than this one 8.37 on the vessel on the jacket you get to say 6.29 so like for example let's discuss this a little bit more so let's copy this and let's say here this is for COJ at a hundred percent and uh, and we're going to copy this copy and paste here so here we are at a hundred percent T2 is 8.37 that's again this will be the condition that I will call uh, this one here is the minimum temperature and this one here is the maximum temperature and that's what that was one of the, the uh, question that we ask what would be the maximum and minimum for this system uh, given the fact that this is the variable that I'm manipulating either from 0 to 100 if it's 0 the temperature here will increase to about 107 if it's a maximum flow through the jacket that the temperature will be the lowest value and that will be 8.37 if we are looking for uh, a set point for when I do process control uh, the set point as always will be uh, a good set point would be the maximum and minimum that would be this one plus this one divided by two about 58 degrees C and that would be a good set point um, I hope that uh, you understand uh, you know how to set this equation and that you understand uh, the, this issue about QJ whether you are heating or cooling with the jacket and uh, and find out what's happening here uh, this system uh, you know by taking a look at it if the temperature start to increase here what you want to do obviously open open you want to open more flow to the jacket and that means that this system is direct system it's a direct system and uh, anything else here that we want to talk about uh, looks like uh, we got pretty much everything we got the uh, steady state value at 37.5 which is going to be 22.6 um, 
maximum flow when there's no flow through the jack. I mean, sorry, uh, maximum temperature when there's no flow through the jacket. That's 107. And when there's flow, a lot of flow at the maximum, that would be 8.37, the minimum temperature. And at the set point, if you are happy that you're going to be doing control, process control, that a good value would be about 58. And, but that's another story. Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.